Hello, this is All Rats. I'm logged on to Free Internet Chess Server or Fix. I'm here to try a little Fisher Random Chess. Um, Fisher Random Chess is probably the wave of the future. Not today, maybe in our grandchildren's time. Regular chess is simply being played out. Too many grandmasters play 25 moves of prepared analysis and shake hands. Fisher Random Chess makes you think on move one as the back row pieces are all rearranged. The simple rules are the bishops must be of opposite colors and the king must be between the two rooks and there are 960 potential starting positions so some people call it chess 960 although its more appropriate name is Fisher Random Chess named after Bobby Fisher who helped popularize it. Anyway uh, I think it'll be good to try some of these games on uh, discuss different strategies how do we come up how do I handle a totally unique position. How do I try to resolve it? Hopefully I can contribute to the development of Chess, of, uh, chess 960 or Fisher Random Chess by showing uh, some ideas and thoughts and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put out a seek for a game with a time control of 15 minutes with a five second increment and see what happens. Okay, putting out my seek. Now let's see how long it takes for the seek to be accepted. Okay, so the position will be uh, random. I don't know if it'll be white or black. I don't know what position we're going to have in the back row. Don't know any of that. Um, there is a lot of, while well, we're waiting for a game to start, it says my seek has been posted with an index of 15 and 19 players saw the seek. That's not too many. Maybe someone will want to play. But, uh, uh, most Fisher Random Chess I've seen played on the internet is played at Blitz. At, over at ICC, it's, they usually have a weekly tournament uh, on Tuesday that about, uh, I think it's 6 p.m. server time, and they play a time control of four minutes with a two-second increment. And then later in the year, they have their annual championships, and I think, I'm not sure if Fisher Random is every year, but it might be. And those two are played at 4-2. And that really isn't enough time to do it justice. Although the increment is helpful, it keeps you from getting flagged in a, in a game that you're going to spend more time on because you're, you're basically swimming in an unfamiliar territory trying to coordinate your pieces. But 4-2 but really doesn't do uh, Fisher Random the justice it deserves. And, and I see some players, they want to play 1-0 uh, Fisher Random. And why? <laughs> Uh, I guess the goal is to flag your opponent and just hopefully he, he gets uh, at a time disadvantage because he's trying to figure it out where you just make moves. I don't know. But uh, Fisher Random is interesting, like I say, because all your opening preparation is thrown out. And I've talked about opening preparation and I say a lot of it's unnecessary. You could spend hours and hours and hours um, preparing openings and and then if you're lucky enough to get your opening, you can find one of several things happening. Your opponent may know the, the opening better than you do, or your opponent may not even allow you to play your opening, or the, uh, the worst case scenario is you, you're playing your opening and you forget the lines, and you're not sure what to do. So you've spent all this time practicing an opening, and uh, your game suffers because you didn't work on other technical aspects of your game. So uh, that's one logic for playing Fisher Random Chess is just to get get that opening thrown out and you know in effect uh, if you're playing a prepared variation it's not cheating because because certainly this, this information is available to everybody it's not cheating but just one if one player focuses attention on preparing openings he's got a distinct advantage over somebody that doesn't and then uh, Fisher Random Chess throws, like I say, it throws all that opening analysis out and it makes it a, a battle of wits right on move one. And that's to me, is more interesting. Uh, just equate it to sports or something like that. Uh, a team that uh, prepares, like a basketball team that prepares a bunch of set plays on both offense and defense would have an advantage over a team that didn't have any plays and the guys just went out there and played their own game. But... Uh, if you're running a race, uh, the goal is to go as fast as you can over a set point of time. Uh, granted, you've worked out before and you've trained physically, but still, it comes down to who runs the fastest and who, who in the in that 
set amount of time that you're that you're running or in the, over that set distance. So Fisher Random Chess <coughs> Chess does that. It basically says on move one, you're both on your own, and we want to see who's going to come out ahead. So here's I'm waiting for game to start. What else can I say about Fisher Random Chess? Let's just look at the position here. A uh, couple things. If you notice in the initial regular chess starting position, every uh, every piece on, or every pawn on both white and black is defended. Okay, the rook defends um, the rook pawns, the bishop defends the knight pawns, and then the C, the bishop pawns are defended by either the king and the queen, and the king and queen pawns are defended by bishops and king and queen. The one weak point being the uh, pawn on f2 or f7. It's only defended by the king, so that's uh, often a key square that uh, one side would like to attack. Although one advantage of modern opening theory is that all the uh, quick attacks on those squares have been discovered and and defense have been, defenses have been found so that one doesn't uh, usually fall into those traps unless you're unprepared or a new player and they're always going to catch new victims but in Fisher Random Chess it's possible that a number of your of your pawns uh, won't be protected on move one and you've, you've got to take some of those things into account and make sure that you don't suddenly drop one and allow, especially if a queen gets into your position uh, if the enemy queen is able to come down and grab one of those pawns it could just start eating up all kinds of material on your back rank. So you, you, you kind of have to be careful about that. A few other things that can happen in Fisher Random Chess that I've noticed is just the way the pawns advance um, often and the way the knights are placed. Someone brings out a knight early. We do that a lot in regular chess and we're prepared to, uh, to defend against um, most positions where pawns chase those knights. But uh, it, in Fisher Random, it's a whole new ball game. The knights are coming out to unfamiliar squares on the first move. They're not really coming out to the normal squares that we put them onto, F F3 and C3. They might be coming out to E3, D3, G3, or or B3. And just the way the the piece placement is, uh, one could be uh, one could see pawn enemy pawns chasing those knights and driving them right back to the first rank or maybe the second rank, and one side could get a, a really good uh, advantage early in a game like Fisher Random Chess. So you definitely definitely have to take your time on the first few moves. Although I've watched uh, some really strong players play it and they're good enough to probably win in any kind of uh, opening. So they'll just start making moves and, and reacting as as the game under un, unfolds. So again, I was watch, like I was watching uh, Nakamura play some Fisher Random and I can't say this exactly but he would move one or two pawns really quick in the opening and try and see some space and sometimes he, it might even be he would expose his king the moving the pawns in, in front of his king but then he gets his king castle to safety and and he's fine speaking of castling it's often possible for uh, white or black to castle on the first move and I've done it before looking here at the initial position just imagine the uh, 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 rook next to the king. If the rook is next to the king and like say for instance if the king is on f1 and the rook is on g1 okay you can castle in that position because you end up the, when you end up in castle, cast, uh, castle position you end up exactly like you would in regular chess. So it has the king has to fall on one of those uh, squares. It has to be on either f1 or it has to be on c1 a square that it would land on and the rook next to it. I'm pretty pretty sure that covers it. But uh, and sometimes you can't castle for several moves. It just depends on the placement and of, of how everything is when it's set up. And my own logic is I when I s start playing I look at the at the uh, position and I say well how quick can I castle? And like I say sometimes you can castle on the first move and and sometimes you look, it might might take two, three, four, five moves to castle. So my first thought when I start a game of Fisher Random is how quick can I castle? And then I'll just look at the moves I have to play to to castle, and I say, well, how do those moves uh, fit what my opponent can do? And and uh, can he get any kind of uh, 
decent play against me if I do this. And one thing I've noticed about Fisher Random Chess related to this is that opposite side, opposite side castling is very common. And the reason is that uh, uh, it's possible to launch these attacks against the, uh, the enemy king. And a lot of people are wanting to try that too because they're a new turf and they're saying, well, you castled queen side, I'll just castle king side and, and throw all my pieces at you. So that's kind of a bold and daring thing. It doesn't mean it's the right strategy. It doesn't mean it's the wrong strategy. But it, what it means is that it's, uh, it's a strategy that has to be explored. Boy, it takes a long time to get a Fisher Random game. Uh, but uh, maybe it's because I'm playing at a time control of 15 and 5. But I want to be able to think. I don't want to play some Blitz game with that. I can do that on ICC, no problem. I can get in a tournament or put out a seek and have a game in no problem. I want to be able to think and describe what I'm talking about. Okay, so what else about Fisher Random? Uh, sometimes the first move it can be, can be a disadvantage, in a, and I mean that by this. Okay, if you get the first move and you've got this totally unfamiliar position, the clock is ticking, right? Now, you could play a move, but do you really have any thought behind it? Probably not. So suppose you want to think. Okay, so you sit there, you think, you let your clock tick, you, you're looking at some ideas of how you want to... Uh, bring your pieces out and while you're thinking your opponents can be thinking the exact same thing and you play finally play a move after say two minutes of time and and your opponent says gee that look I was thinking of that move I would do that move if I was white so I'll just play it and he plays a symmetrical game and this happens a lot in in normal chess e4 e5 d4 d5 knight f3 knight f6 right c4 c5 it's it's not uncommon for black to mimic white's first move so all of a sudden uh you've played your first move after two three four minutes thought and your opponent has now replied instantly and i'm um, and certainly most certainly has at least an even game because it's the game has just started and and suddenly he's got a time advantage on you so sometimes the first move isn't an advantage and and that's kind of good uh it, it's still an advantage because you've got that half tempo, but it's kind of a disadvantage because you've given up a little clock time. So one one always has to manage your clock when you're playing uh, any game, and when you have to lose a substantial amount of time trying to sort out the opening, it can it can come back and be a disadvantage later when you really need time when the game gets complicated. In all in all honesty, fifteen a uh, time control of fifteen and five doesn't really do Fisher Random justice. Uh, really, what you need to play chess, you need the international time control. Forty moves in one hundred and fifty minutes or two and a half hours, and then adjourn and resume the next day. And they don't do adjournments anymore. One of the ideas that Fisher had was with his Fisher clock, with an increment, you could play in one setting. And his idea makes sense. It takes away the idea that uh, you you take the game home and, and put uh, put your computer to work or put all your friends to work and they look at it overnight and come up with all the answers while you get a good night's sleep and then you come back the next day and, and proceed to uh, perform at the highest level because you're well prepared. So, but still, Fisher Random Chess could be played with the same uh, increment. You could play uh, 120 mo uh, get 120 minutes and say a 60 second increment and still be a approximating the old fide time control. And this is true chess. And I'll while I'm waiting for a game, I'll just kind of ramble on about this and and go from there. Uh, and I may even cut this short and save this for an introduction video to Fisher Random and then try to find other ways to get a game going with it. Uh, but anyway, uh, Fisher, Fisher Random is going to be extremely popular one day when, as more and more people discover it. The only way they're going to discover it is if they're exposed to it. And hence I'm making videos just to do, do my share. Uh, but chess, like I say, it's exciting. Chess isn't blitz. And I've said this before. Uh, one nice thing about the internet is you can log on to just about any chess server anywhere, any time of the day, definitely any time of the day, any day of the year, and have a game in seconds. But it's going to be uh, most likely a one, a three, or a five-minute game. And in if even if you're skilled in that 
one to three five or five minute game there's going to be a lot of good chess played but there's also going to be an awful lot of bad chess played it doesn't matter uh, how good you are you're not going to be finding the best moves you're just going to be finding moves that that uh, don't take time that save time on the clock that look logical and go from there and if you're if you're fortunate enough that your opponent makes a mistake first and you also bear the fortune that your opponent uh, didn't uh, take advantage of any of your, your mistakes uh, you, you have a chance to get a strong initiative and then uh, maybe even more of a strong initiative than you would have against the same player in a serious game and then you can use your skill and training to wrap the game up rather nicely and you'll win those games with advantages more often than not but once again it's not real chess and you're basically forcing yourself by playing blitz chess all the time you're forcing yourself not to play your best chess you're getting in a mindset not to do this and over the years I've uh, observed a number of, of people that play a lot of blitz and then I've later seen them online and I've seen players with borderline 2,000, 2,100 strength that have 25, 2,600 blitz ratings and they're not that good they're, in in real uh, real strength. Like I say, they're 2,000 to 2,100 players. They have fundamental flaws in their game, but they've played an awful lot of blitz in real life and then down turn translated into internet chess. They've played a lot of blitz chess and against strong players and I guess got even better at it because they already had a certain knack. And you try to challenge one of these guys to a long game and they'll just laugh at you and they ignore you and say, I don't play fish. Well, in reality, they don't want to play standard because they don't want their weaknesses to be exposed. And that, and by that, I mean they're, they don't have the, the true skill of a chess master. They're, they're not going to show their, their real game online because I guess they've, they think that this 25, 2600 rating or, or 2200 bullet rate, ma rating makes them some kind of a chess god when really they're not well in all honesty yeah they are that strong at this cut type of chess bullet chess or or blitz chess but that that doesn't really equate to real over the board chess i mean they're, they're going to beat uh international masters and grandmasters with frequency at, at these time controls but good luck doing that in a real setting it, it they may once in a while but when they're only real true strength is around elo 2000 it's not going to happen so I've been having this seek open now for 17 minutes and 38 seconds. I'm just going to keep talking and end up calling this an introduction to Fisher Random and then figure out how to uh, get a game going because it, uh, apparently it's not going to happen. But um, that's all right. I, I want to, I'll just save this video for the time when I finally get a game and put it separately. And those that want to see it may, those that don't, don't have to. But let's again. Let's talk a little bit more about blitz chess. Uh, it's great for grandmasters because they're they're playing top flight chess already professionally, or, or, or at least part time professionally. And the one thing they want to do is they want to learn more about their openings and or test new openings. And and what com more convenient way to do it than to go online and and start playing blitz chess with it? That doesn't they get they get to play more games because the games will be over faster. Uh, if, a, if a grandmaster plays a three minute games and they take the full duration, that's at six minutes every game. So he can get, uh, what, 10 games in in an hour against another grandmaster. They play 10 games each, right? Or, or 10 games against each other. And if they were to play one long game, that would take, what, four or five hours? So they have a chance to practice more openings. So they so they go and they'll go and do this and they're quite happy they're doing this for recreation and to practice their their uh, openings practice their middle game strategy and planning a few tactics tactics and then end game technique and we the lower player we look at these grandmasters and say gee wow uh, look at them they're playing blitz all the time I got to do that and and then we look around the servers and then oh there's a three minute tournament starting in 20 minutes I'm gonna enter and then we go and happily play just like the grandmasters are doing we're playing like they are at least the style of chess they are but we're really not improving our chess and I think that blitz is okay for for a few reasons a little bit but to take it seriously or to stop and analyze your games I think just is a, is a huge waste of time because 
really you didn't see most of the stuff that that you would in it in a in a real game. I mean, there, there could be some use for for studying things if you if you reach a theoretically one ending and the books say it's winning, but you don't win it. Yeah, that's useful to go up and look up because now you can go find the right way to win it. Or if, if you misplay an opening and get a disadvantage, yeah, you can go look that up. So blitz should be not be taken seriously, just more for training and, than anything else. And don't worry about your your rating. I mean, so many people are so worried about ratings. Your only real rating that counts is whatever your official uh, national rating is. That's what counts. And you know, players get uh, like, for instance, say with ICC or just about any server, you start out with a professional rating, and and it's. Uh, not established until you've completed 20 games. Now, since you completed 20 games, say your rating ends up 1650, whatever category. Okay, now it says high. Your high rating is 1650. Now, everyone's going to get a high, and it's going to be based on that current rating at 20 games. Now, if you keep on winning games, it's going to go up. Your rating's going to go up, and your high rating is going to go up. But eventually, you finally um, fall back and 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 uh, your rating drops, and maybe it could drop one, two, three, four hundred points uh, below your high rating. You've seen all kinds of variations, and it can take years or months or days, whatever, just to come back and threaten to get that old rating again. And basically, after a thousand games or two thousand games, if you're not, if you haven't really improved your uh, uh, high, your rating high, then that you're probably your strength at this level, this time control, is going to be a little lower than that. So, like, for instance, if you have a high of, well, take my case, uh, my ICC uh, five-minute rating, I think it's 2001, and I set that back in 2005, and I haven't beat it since, and I've played about 1,700 five-minute games. So it's safe to say that my five-minute strength is around 1,900, and uh, that falls far, far short of, of master strength, but yet here I am a master, but I just can't play five minute. I can't play three minute. I, c I can play it, but I can't play it well. But if you also look at my ratings at ICC, if you look if you look at the 15 minute rating, that's that's over 2100, and with a high much higher around 2150. So there I'm approaching uh, a better a better rating simply because I I have more time to stop and think, and I don't throw games away. Uh, at, at a 15 minute time control like I do at a 3 or a 5 minute time control and they have a, fi a 45 minute pool but my rating isn't that high It's, but partly it's because the pool is so new and I haven't participated in it in over a year maybe I'll go back and try it one of these days I don't know but uh, it's, I think it's only 1913 but I have a, a pretty decent record um, I think 70 wins 13 losses and a handful of draws and at least two or three of my losses were to disconnects. You know, you, unfortunately, if you disconnect in a in a game, in, in a pool game, you you lose, and that's fine. That's fair. It's understandable. So what? You lost a game. Big deal. Who's going to win every game? Nobody is. Okay, we're approaching. We're past 23 minutes. It's getting a little too long. I'm. Uh, nobody's going to want to wade through this. If somehow a game starts, I'll stop the video and restart it, so we can play a game right off the fresh. But I'm going to close this this down here shortly because I'm kind of running out of things to say and I never thought I'd say that because I always have something to say but I don't have anything to, current to say because we don't have a game in front of us so where are we we are sitting here watching the seeks go by and the challenges and nobody wants to play Fisher random chess what a shame what a shame if I had placed a seek for a 15-5 game it would have been accepted for a regular chess it would have been accepted immediately but nobody wants to play it but that's all right if you don't want to play it you don't learn so how do you learn about chess you learn by playing you learn by practicing you learn by studying your games i've said all this in all my online lesson program anyway 24 minutes and 7 seconds and i'm about ready to call this one off i don't know if i'll ever use this video or not uh, I guess it just depends when I finally find a way, place to play some fish at random. I don't want to play 5-minute fish at random. I, I might consider 10-minute with a 5-second increment. I might consider that. I, I, I have to have some time to think because uh, if I, I, I need to explain things to you guys too, and I tend to take time a little more time explaining things. And, and if I'm playing a 5-minute game of fish at random with, with the extra complications, I'll, yeah, I'll get a lot of games, but I won't be able to explain much. So, 
what I'm going to do is thank you for time at looking at this. I will find some ways to get some Fisher Random games played. You won't see this yet, but you'll see it one day when I finally do. Then we can dispense with all the trivialities. Oh, got a game. Amazing.